Hey Alpha fan, welcome back to another episode of Alpha Commission. Today on Alpha Commission, of course, I'm going to go over that pump on the Bitcoin chart as well as in the stock market and XRP, guys. Of course, the markets are pumping off of that good news from the PPI data as well as the CPI yesterday. Uh, both inflation indexes did come down uh, significantly, and that is allowing the market to relax about the potential for Fed increases guys uh, this is good news the dollar is also dropping now it was very overheated it was overpriced and it's coming back to uh, appropriate levels this is not the dollar quote-unquote dying in fact I believe that Janet Yellen was sent overseas to China to make a deal with China probably about debt restructuring and dollar price easing because China's currency is in a free fall, which is in a dying mode. And that could easily collapse the Chinese economy and that would spill over to the United States. So we have an interest in working together on this and the U.S. government may allow the dollar to just relax a bit more in order to prevent a China crisis that could spread across the entire world. Guys, the China uh, dollar is is not going to take over the U.S. dollar. The dollar has hegemonic uh, power in this global banking system, and it's going to be that way for at least the next 20 years. And by the way, the Chinese yuan is not the uh, uh, likely successor to this, not in its current stage. There is no likely successor and so we are going to just continue to see dollar dominance, and that's why the U.S. will continue to enjoy advantages in this system. And just, uh, just wanted to put that out there because uh, you know a lot of people in crypto they like to say, ah, oh, the dollar's dying, the dollar's dying. It's not dying, guys, but it is relaxing, and that does make things that trade against it uh, be able to pump easier. Uh, because if everything is traded like BTC, USD, gold, USD, right? then that means that uh, as the dollar goes down, that other asset can appreciate against the dollar. Now, guys, we are on the weekly here, and I did want to reiterate something that a lot of you uh, numbskulls don't seem to realize, which is that we are in a bull market, bull market, bull market, bull market, eh, kind of cut off before it was able to continue, bull market, Bull market, whenever we're above the Bollinger Bands midline on the weekly, we are in a bull market, guys. Okay, so I don't know why, I don't know why some people can't believe that. Ever since uh, $19,000, of course, the Alpha Fam brought here around $16,000, maybe fifteen five on just on some uh, kind of microstructures. It was a bit of a gamble, but there was a huge divergence here. There was some divergences from way back here. And so we took a shot at that and then uh, continued to buy when we had a nice bullish higher low and some structure there around uh, 16 to 17,000. And then from 19,000, I've just been screaming at the top of my lungs that we're in a bull market. Now, that doesn't mean that we are in the, uh, you know, the you know, that kind of run up to the apex of the next cycle. It just means that we are in a, a mid cycle rally. Okay. So some people might want to call it a fool's rally. Some people might want to call it a bear market rally. It's okay to have these different names, but just don't deny that we are having a bull run and that we are in a bull market here. The stock market is almost at all time highs. Okay, guys. So I don't know what your definition of a bull market is. Uh, you know, surpassing the previous all time high, that's a very tough barrier. That would make you miss almost everything. Okay. There can be bull runs and there can be bull markets uh, before or we uh, reached the previous all-time high. I mean, this was just incredible, right? If you had bought down here to here, it doesn't even matter if you passed that previous all-time high. That was a bull market, okay? And it was incredible, and you could have made a ton of money, and we've just been making a ton of money. But guys, uh, some of you still think that we're in a bear market, and that's where you're going to lose opportunity. If you still think like we're in this trend right here, 
I've got another thing to tell you. I mean, the Perma Bears are in a significant loss right now. And of course, these uh, mid cycle rallies cannot. Uh, you know, be sustained forever. There's just not enough uh, liquidity in the system. There's not enough new people coming into the market to really push it to new all-time highs. And so anybody defining by uh, previous all-time highs as a market, well, that's understandable. Of course, that's a, a new cycle, right? A new cycle. And we expect that sometime in 2024, uh, maybe even 2025, depending how the recession goes. But one thing that's undeniable is that ever since January, we have been on at least a bull run by everyone's definition. And uh, by my uh, technical definition, uh, we are in a bull market, which is the stock market up 20%. The uh, Bitcoin up 40%, and we are well, 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 well surpassed that, guys. So I just want to remind you where you are so that you don't forget yourselves. And I think a lot of you guys forgot yourselves at the bottom of the market. And so you need this kind of wake up call. You need this kind of, uh, you know, sh shaking and being told what's going on. Because if we do get a push here, uh, it could be extraordinary. And of course, I also have to remind you that if we break down, that there's standards that we can apply. And those standards are going to be that Bollinger Band midline on the weekly, which is around 27,400 currently. We can just call it 27,500 so it's easy to remember. And furthermore, I would just like to add some nuance to this because, of course, uh, I can do some more advanced um, you know, calculations. And we can go ahead and put up the uh, weekly and the biweekly volatility pivots. And then I could suggest that if we do have a pullback, that we had really uh, want to maintain above the 29,000 and definitely above the $28,000 uh, zone and bounce off of that sort of the way that we bounced here and bounced here. And yes, it's okay to have little flash wicks below uh, this diagonal, which represents just a smoothing out of the Bollinger Bands midline there on the weekly, but, but, you know, uh, if we lose these volatility pivots on the week and the uh, buy week, then that could potentially have us falling even lower where uh, we might have to uh, retest the monthly volatility pivot. So you can see that we really don't want to break down below that Bollinger Band midline. That would cross the monthly neutral point of control, and that could uh, just embed us to the downside to retest the support that we have in this area around nineteen to $20,000, maybe even a wick down to seventeen dollars to $18,000, and hopefully get a higher low off of that. But as long as we are a above the Bollinger Band midlines on the weekly, then we do have the potential to pump all the way uh, up to the six month volatility pivot. And the six month volatility pivot is all the way up here around $50,000 with the bullish control zone of the monthly at around uh, 42 to $44,000. And so we could easily test those areas um, should we just continue on this megalithic run, guys. Of course, we are facing resist resistance right now at that three month volatility pivot. And this is a very tough nut to crack, just like the six month would be tough nut to uh, tough nut to crack and so would be uh, getting underneath the monthly people who are looking at 10,000 it's just unlikely because we would probably have some reaction at that pivot we would probably have some reaction at this pivot and just like we're having a reaction at this pivot right here and it sent us uh, away you know we're going to bounce up here probably going to get sent away if we drop down here we would probably just bounce right back up sent away from it and so that's how these volatility pivots tend to work they don't always work that way but they tend to work that way and currently we're just seeing can we push through this uh three month volatility pivot the three month did just close and so we are uh looking to see if we can get through that now uh guys if we just uh, go uh back to a, a more reasonable time frame 
Well, I think I should point out uh, simply that we are above the momentum pool of the monthly, and we will re remain there as long as we're above 30,467. And we don't break down from it until under 27,152. And then we can consider uh, that we are, in fact, losing momentum and uh, could pot potentially uh, check back to that pivot point um, around uh, 19 to 20K. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and just give you some updates on some dailies because I think that's enough macro for you. You guys understand why we're bullish, right? We've got XRP winning uh, half of its lawsuit. We have uh, the dollar dropping, which allows everything trading against it to be really good. We have the CPI data. We have the PPI data, all that inflation data uh, turning up really good news, which means that the Fed probably doesn't have to increase interest rates. And so all of this stuff is bullish. And then, of course, we also have uh, BlackRock potentially entering the Bitcoin market, which is just fueling that kind of narrative. And it's putting uh, Bitcoin back on the table uh, for regular uh, traders to start thinking about again. That's why you're seeing in the stock market, as the stock market pumps, uh, that it's dragging along like a Coinbase and some of these uh, Bitcoin miner companies. And so all this whole ecosystem is starting to move together. And what XR, the XRP XRP win does is it allows altcoins to come along with Bitcoin, whereas previously we had a regulation narrative that was really oppressive, and so altcoins haven't been doing much. It may be time for altcoins to do something. So even if Bitcoin has a pullback or goes sideways for a while or something, uh, maybe altcoins can have a little bit of time. Maybe the market's going to relax a little bit around them. Uh, so again, like I think I've said this three times now, let's go ahead and uh, get off the uh, monthly here. Oops. And uh, let's go ahead and put on the uh, new daily levels that you should watch there. And of course, uh, we are currently at the measured move that I did give you in the last episode. Now, you guys could say uh, that's not an inverted head and shoulders, but look, we, we hit my target almost precisely, almost to the dollar accuracy there, guys. Okay, so I had a little area here between uh, 31,700 and then I had this diagonal that would have brought us up to that uh, 31,900. And that's literally where we hit off the measured move of this one and off of the diagonal here. I, I basically was able to triangulate the area that we would hit at by using uh, this pattern and this diagonal. And that's precisely where we hit Alpha Fam. As long as we maintained above the daily Bollinger Band midline, there was almost no question about it, guys. Uh, we held all of the structure that we needed to hold. We had a healthy check back. That was the entry. And we never violated the Bollinger Band midline. So uh, everything looks uh, pretty good. And right here on the daily, you can see that we are having a little bit of a, a check back uh, in the uh, daily momentum pool as we're facing that resistance that has just uh, rejected us uh, time and time again, right? Rejected, 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 rejected again, okay? Are we going to be accepted? Well, let's see. If we can hold the momentum pool above 31,000, Eight, uh, well, 31,082, and especially if we can get above it at 31,472, then we are going to have a bias to the upside. And personally, if we dipped below this box and re-entered it, I would be uh, willing to entertain that long because we are above the volatility pivot. And in fact, even if we checked back to the volatility pivot at 30,523, I would still consider that uh, worthy of a potential um, entry just because our bias would still be to the upside as long as we're above the Bollinger Bands there, above 30,200. And in fact, the neutral point of control on the RSI is 29,824. So I still would consider that as a possible um, you know, entry here as a possible uh, level for us to buy back into uh, this market should you have taken your profit already up here. And any pullback, I think, is a blessing, especially if we get to that weekly and that bi-weekly entry here. Now, what I don't want to do is lose that area. I'm going to be a little bit sketch if we come down to the weekly Bollinger Bands midline. I still would be willing to buy this area in a flash wick. I don't want to buy it 
if uh, candles start kind of, you know, just uh, consolidating there, okay? I don't want it to be consolidating against support, um, which could break down. I would like to see it just... Um, you know, maybe have a pullback, maybe check here and go, or have a pullback somewhere here and go, or just have like a flash wick down there just to scare the living bejesus out of everybody. And then on our way back, when we reclaim these levels, that would be the entry. And that does line up with this diagonal that we have here, okay, which is being formed by some of these wicks. So this may be a blessing in disguise, which ends up becoming an accumulation wedge that we take off from if we don't just break out here, okay? So let me just clean up this mess and just uh, draw that out again so you can imagine that maybe we just have a little bit of a pullback here or something and just we just go for it, okay? Maybe we just go for it, Alpha Fam. And, you know, if you didn't enter, then you didn't enter and sorry, you know, maybe you can get the breakout. Um, if we can clear these uh, $31,800 levels, then I would say that 32 and, you know, to 33 is really on the table, okay? And maybe even 35 to 36, okay? Just, uh, just putting it out there. But if we are heavily rejected here, because let's just say it was a little bit over enthusiastic and maybe there's money to be made in, um, you know, basically breaking the bulls temporarily, right? You're breaking my bulls, guys. And so we're going to have a uh, potential pullback if we get under that daily Bollinger Band midline and then violate the neutral point of control. And uh, uh, of course, uh, we would potentially see some type of scary flash wick, just like we saw here right? Just like we saw here. And again, just like those two, I would consider that a buying opportunity on the reclaim, okay? On the reclaim, right? On the reclaim, not here, okay? Not here, all right? Let's give the bears their chance because they might end up just tipping this ship over. But if you guys want to be a little bit strategic about it, you're going to buy it on the reclaim. You don't have to get the Pico bottom, okay, guys? And so, uh, yeah, I mean, that's my strategy there on the day. And then, of course, if that does happen, then what we could see is that we break down here, flash wick up, reclaim, you know, or maybe we just cut into this area. And then we maybe carve out, you know, some of these areas into a triangle that becomes an accumulation wedge. And that'll bring us back back up to this area because that's the measured move here is that that's the measured move and this would essentially um, be at risk of becoming a double top or or alternatively it would um, break through and then uh, just keep on going okay because you know we'll have to measure it at that time but these are the two like dramatic scenarios I'm looking at. And currently we are on the bullish side of it rather than the pullback side of it. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, at least we have our strategy uh, for the day. Then let's go ahead and jump down to the six hour just so you can see if there's any difference with the six hour pool. Now this one, of course, the daily closes in 20 hours, but the six hour uh, closes in uh, two hours. So this will give you a little bit of an idea of what's coming up just in the uh, intraday kind of trade. And here you can see that, of course, we would hold our momentum at 31,472, where we did get that pullback. And then uh, we're going to lose the bullish control zone under 31,153. Now, that could give you a heads up that we might uh, end up breaking out of the momentum pool under 30,879. Uh, and that happens to correspond with the volatility pivot as well. And so if we do lose 30,877, then we could end up retesting the neutral point of control at 30,550 and then that could be what leads us to that bearish control zone at 29,567 and if we're to remain bullish then again uh, you know flash wick anywhere underneath this area and into this area I don't care but as long as we pull back up above the bullish control zone and head back towards that neutral point of control, basically the center of this price action, then I would say that we're still in the bullish mode. But should we get embedded underneath that bearish control zone, then that's going to be the indication that maybe we're going to have to carve out a low here. And I'm still not going to be bearish because it's still going to be a higher low. Okay, so like this is a high. 
this is a very slightly higher high. And if we carved out a higher low here, we would still be in a technical uptrend and we would be forming just a giant accumulation wedge, which could then break out. That's why I'm not opposed to this idea and this idea. It's just going to finish the wedge, okay? And that's going to be, that's going to have a lot of power behind it, okay? Rather than just this bull flag, we're going to have a massive amount of power behind the structure if we're able to carve this out. And so uh, when I say I don't want to see us consolidate against um, support here, what I mean is I don't want to see us consolidate like a, a bear flag or something. I want to see us like a, basically have an accumulation where the bottom rises because it keeps getting bought up by buyers who just happen to find this to be a um, you know an, a good value price as opposed to right at resistance where it's very difficult to buy. It might be a lot easier to buy down here, right? Um, of course, the nervous Nellies, the scared, the scaredy cats won't do it, and that's why it's a good va value. Okay. And so looking for that, and, uh, you know, that would just be a great opportunity to get back in should you have already taken uh, your profit. Currently, price action is above the six-hour momentum pool. So, again, like this thing could just, you know, this thing could just actually fly, okay? It could just fly away from us um, if it doesn't get, you know, stuck inside of the pool. If it does get stuck inside of the pool, you know, within like a one or two six hour candles, it could end up um, drifting to the other side. But if it closes on top of the pool above 31,472, then this thing could just really be bullish and we would have to watch out to see if it doesn't just fly. Okay. Okay, guys, that's your uh, six hour. Let's go ahead and jump down to the one hour. Now, from now on, I am going to just be giving the one hour in the uh, group uh, itself. The description, I mean, the uh, link to the group is in the uh, description of the video below. But, uh, you know, it's just too time sensitive and YouTube just takes too long to upload videos. So I can't really give it give you something that's meaningful but you know these do last for several hours so uh, at least uh, before they start degrading and you can see we're even above the uh, momentum pool on the one hour which is uh, holding at 31,469 and uh, we don't lose that pool until 31,425 very narrow pool so if we do enter that uh, we could end up uh, coming back to retest the volatility pivot at 31,355. If we lose that, that's potentially your short to the neutral point of control or this Bollinger Band midline here, somewhere between 31,100 and 30,989, maybe some wicks in this area or something. And if we lose that, then we get embedded under the hour and that can bring us down to that 30 level. And obviously that would set a chain of events in motion for the six hour. Uh, which then, of course, uh, would affect the daily most likely. So again, uh, you know, things start small, so you can check out the one hour, and then that would move into the six hour, and then you can check da the daily by the end of tomorrow. But uh, yeah, guys, uh, that's going to be your alphas. I think I did upload a video prior to this one. Not sure if you guys saw it, but uh, for some reason, one of my USB ports burnt out. And so my voice wasn't recorded. And so you just had the video, not the audio. Sorry about that, but I will try to put out this video right now. And uh, again, that's your alpha for the day. Stay safe and happy trading.